Welcome to part 3 of Periodic Resources video tutorial. We're using the data area, no triggers, and absolutely zero triggers in this. Uh, please watch part 1 and part 2 if you have not. If you'd like more information about the map that we're using, Island Cannon Wars, please check out those videos when and if they are available. So now we're getting ready to actually add our events to make our floating text not only show up, but move like you'd expect floating, expect, ugh, floating text to move. So the first thing we need to do is go into our event editor. We actually need to add, of course, a new event. This is very similar to the trigger editor, but there is a lot of differences. It's not quite as complicated right now. I don't know if Blizzard's going to uh, smooth it out, make it look nice, and look much more like the trigger editor. I have a feeling they might, and I'm hoping so, because it can be very complicated to figure this out. Best thing to do, play around with stuff and check other units. I know you've heard that forever, but you know that's how I figured this stuff out. So the first thing we want to do is create it. Now, the event is obvious. Uh, what fires it? What makes this happen? So we're going to do an effect event. Okay? We want an effect to happen. The effect we want to happen is our periodic resources effect. The same effect we made to actually give the uh, periodic resources. Mm. Excuse me. So I'm going to pick periodic minerals. Okay, now there's a submain start and stop. Now I know you're thinking, oh that's easy, just put it in for start and then for stop. Not so easy, since there's no real delay or anything in this in this in this effect, it would never show up. You would never see it. So all we're going to do is start. Okay, and if it is, we we just want to create. That's it. This will make the text show up. Period. This is just going to make it show up. Okay, we want to add another effect because we can't add multiple uh, messages right now, which is basically the actions for the moment. I'm hoping that will change. So in order for us to actually be able to do anything, we actually have to just create a new one. Not a huge deal. But we are going to pretty much use the same exact thing we did before. So periodic minerals start. And what we want to do here is actually create a timer. So we're going to set, start a timer, timer set, and this is what this is what's going to make things work. We're going to set the duration to just oh just about 0.2 seconds, and we're going to name this delay one. Okay, pretty simple, but uh, this will make it out so we can actually do our floating text. Now there's probably a better way to do this. Um, I found this works out pretty well, and it's okay for what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and use this. Feel free to find other ways to do stuff. Okay? Alright, so now, with that done, we have figured that out. So now we want to see when that timer expires. So, do timer uh, expired. Source we want as our, as our actual actor here, which is periodic floating text mineral mine. So we're going to find our actor, because that's what it's going through, as actors. So we go here, there's the command center, there's mineral line. Very important. Each each actor can have timers on them. Any timers you want, you can interact with them and everything like that. So it's really, really cool. Imagine what you can do. A lot of it's very obvious we can pretty much do everything in the data editor that we are used to and can do with triggers, just about. So that's actually pretty cool. Now what we wanted to do is when it's expired, we wanted to do something. But it's just expired. It's like, well, wait a minute. How do we know which timer expired? Since we can name it and set it, right? So we need to add a term. A term is just basically a condition. In this case, we want to check the timer name. So we put in timer name, and then we put in our name that we put. So delay one. So if it is delay, the timer, the timer is expired. And if it's delay one, then I want you to do this. So in this case, we want to actually change the height. of our oops, wrong one. Oh, wrong one. Jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's the one. No no, that's not it. It's the other one. There we go. So set height. And this is relative, so this is gonna start from where we start, from our offset. We have an offset of 3, so we're starting at 3. We want it to move up, and we want it to make it as smooth as possible looking. So I found that 
doing a timer every two seconds and moving it up just a 2.2 each time actually makes a nice smooth motion. So we're going to be adding a lot of these and basically you just want to keep copying and, and so on and so forth. So to do that we're going to go ahead and just do a simple copy, paste, timer expire, timer delay 1. Since we've set our height now we actually want to set another timer. So timer set, duration, another 0 0.2 and the name we want is delay 2. Okay, so then we just copy and paste. We change this from delay 1 to delay 2. Set height from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. It is relative, but you got to keep adding as you're going up. So it, it kind of is confusing. If you're not 100% sure, just think of it as x plus and whatever number. Think of it that way. So now we need another timer set, so delay 2, creating another timer, two point zero point two seconds, and we want to name this 3. Now at every third, every third timer that we're going to have, we're going to have a total of about, I think it's 13, 14, you're going to see here, but at every third we're actually going to do another effect to make it look, again, look like it actually is a floating text. So we need the condition to be 3, and this needs to be 6, and we'll just paste that here, and we're going to change this from set height to set opacity, and we're going to change opacity to 0 0.8. So it's actually going to fade down the opacity. Now for text, instead of just fading out in here and everything, it actually kind of blinks out. It's kind of cool, so uh, you'll see that. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to repeat that uh, until pretty much the opacity is is at, at 0 0.2, and the last one will actually destroy it. So we'll go ahead and do that really quick. Sorry, I had to find my place. Copy, paste, delay 3. Whoops. No, 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 no. Yeah, delay 3. Yep, I'm sorry. Lost my head there delay 4. So there you go. And then we just continue doing that. It's on and on and on and on and on. So I'm actually going to stop or pause the video real quick and then I'm going to resume recording after I've copied all these and we're near uh, about ready to remove our actual text. Alright, so we finished making all those uh, actor events. Basically just continue where we left off from number 3. So we set height, we set the opacity, set it to delay 4, and then delay 4 just keep bringing the height up. And then when we got to delay 6, again we set the opacity down, and so on and so forth. And that's basically what you want to do. You can play with it as you see fit, but that's pretty much what we do. And I've done it up to about delay 14, puts us at 2.8. So when we do uh, delay 15, which would be the next uh, set opacity, but since it would be 0, we might as well just go ahead and, and remove our, our uh, floating text now. So we're pretty much ready to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing we want to do is instead of having a delay 14 as our name, we're just going to call this end. And this is great, so if you actually make modifications to it and decide to add more delay timers, you won't have to worry about uh, the, the actual uh, timer being misfired or renumbering everything. Stuff like that. So we're just going to set it to end, and we're going to add a new term. Oops, sorry. My bad. We're going to add a new event. And again, this is just timer expire. Again, our uh, periodic, our floating text, periodic floating text. we got mineral mine. Oops, mineral mine, not command center. And then, of course, our term, we want it to be timer named end. So, with that set, all we need to do is just simply destroy it. And that just destroys the text. Simple. Very, very simple. And there you go. You've just created, simulated, or, or basically have made floating text within the data editor.
So how does it look? How do we get everything hooked up? You don't have to link it to anything or nothing like that. Um, very, 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 very simple. We are going to add one more thing to our effect though. And again, this is the best i found in order to get it to only appear to certain things. It's not perfect. If anybody has a better way of checking for this, uh, please do so. I spent probably two, three hours trying to figure it out with validators and I haven't had uh, very good success. So, by all means, please, please, please uh, let me know and I will gladly update this tutorial with that information. So we have a validate player is player just created something called is player unit. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's going to work exactly right or whatever, but that's what I've set up. 